spending the extra time in having more than one devotional, I get a chance to let God choose to speak to me personally through the volume of devotionals in this devotional project to help me to grasp better how he's viewing the end of the world as well as each individual person that's in the world that he would desire to save and to touch in a personal way because it has never been God's desire that he should end his creation or that he should terminate you know lives that in some way or somehow have not known or have not come to realization of God because God said himself that every single human being as well as creation itself knows its maker they do know but they have chosen to reject the only begotten son of god and for that the father will not accept anything less than perfection from his creation and his created beings and while that was intended directly for angels to be damned eventually into the lake of fire it caused that to be increased because all of anything that's been tainted, abused, corrupted by that rebellion likewise has to be cast aside from the perfection that creation will become. And if you find yourself as a corrupted person or a corrupted being, then the reality is, is that you will be separated from those who are perfect because your Heavenly Father wants you to be perfect. But if you choose to be corrupt, then he has no options but to remove you from his sight. And that's not a place that I would want to be, do you? In Tozer, Christ's words are for the children of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. The gracious words of Jesus are for the sons and daughters of grace, not for the Gentile nations whose chosen symbols are the lion, the eagle, the dragon, and the bear. So the notion that the Bible is addressed to everybody has wrought confusion within and without the church. The effort to apply the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount to the unregenerate or unsaved nations of the world is one example of this. Courts of law and military powers of the earth are urged to follow the teachings of Christ or to be Christian in ethic, in moral, and in value. An obvious impossible thing for them to do. To put the words of Jesus as guides for policemen, for judges, and for generals is to misunderstand those words completely and to reveal a total lack of understanding of the purposes of divine revelation. Not only does God address his words of truth to those who are able to receive them, he actually conceals their meaning to those who are not, to whom he that hath ears to hear, the Spirit would cause them to hear it. But he that has not ears to hear, or is unwilling to listen, would not understand, much less hear what Jesus is saying. The parables of Christ were the exact opposite of the modern illustration, which is meant to give light. The parables were dark sayings, and Jesus asserted he sometimes used them so that his disciples could understand them, and his enemies could not. The natural man must know in order to believe. The spiritual man must believe in order to know. When God wants to reveal anything, he makes it so simple that it becomes oblivious to those who already think they know. The fact that we can read the Bible and it means what it says was the perfect deception for those who are too wise to understand the simplicity of what it says and what it means. When you have someone who's willing to say yes is yes and no is no, they can't deal with that in their world and their setting. Often in politics we're told that you have to compromise. And in Jesus Christ's kingdom, the word compromise is an obscenity. There is no such thing as compromise. You do what God says or you don't. So for a politician to say no simply means not now 
and that eventually you can persuade them to change their mind or you can persuade them to give a little here or there. In humanism, often no simply means no, not now, but once I do know, then I can go ahead and decide for myself, and it makes its own God out of the self-determination. But Jesus said, no is no, yes is yes. There is no maybe. So, what we find is that God hid the wisdom of God in the simplicity of just the Bible itself meaning what it says. And the fact is that anyone who reads it can understand it, but it passes them by because it's not so much a spiritual book as it is simply saying too easily to be believed that it can't be that simple, a person says, and then automatically adds their own meaning to it. But if you treat it as it is, the way it is, God speaking, that means he's choosing to communicate to you. He's wanting to make something understood. And if you're willing to read it that way, there is no problem. Even the atheist would come to salvation if he quit trying to interpret it and simply read it for what it says. God said he would use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and he has. It's called the Word of God. It's called God speaking in it, and it's called, cause, it's called God revealing himself through it. Unfortunately, do we do it? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves every day that we're alive, is that are we willing to do the Word of God as we read it when God speaks, us, speaks to us in it? The same is true in your devotional. Are you willing to just do it? <laughs>